What is that? It's a vector scope. Hello. Well, there's always more to learn about audio and video equipment, and such it was, I wanted to learn a little bit about vector scopes. These are um, pieces of equipment that uh, are used professionally to uh, assist with color alignment of video signals, and they can do some other things too. Uh, so I bought on eBay a non-working vector scope, uh, and it turned out to be quite a simple fault. It was only a, a blown rectifier in, in the power supply, and I repaired that and switched on. It worked for about two minutes. And then a fault developed in the high voltage circuit that drives the tube. And I wasn't able to fix that. I spent many hours trying to fix it. Uh, there's a problem with the feedback in there. So this is my first attempt at a vector scope. So you can see it looks a little bit like an oscilloscope, uh, but it points, puts points on here, which show you the intensity and phase of color signals, especially if you put on a color bar signal, it's very good for lining the uh, the whole chain so they used uh, not only for the camera side when you're trying to make sure that the lighting and color is correct on pictures you've captured but also in the whole transmission chain your video recorders for example uh, I have a one inch C format video recorder and you certainly need a vector scope to set that up it would have been great if I'd been able to fix this wonderful piece of equipment but um, no uh, I wasn't able to uh, get the better of it. So that could have been the end of that. That's um, my analog vector scope. It has in the back some channels input. So channel A, B and C. So it's three input composite video feeds input and it can feed out again as well and a few other connectors too. So uh, that's what uh, I would like to have fixed. Let me just quickly show you the age of this thing. It was made in around the ICs on this are dated around about 1990, so it gives you an idea of the age of this particular one. Maybe one day I can fix it, but uh, right now, let's put that to one side. Some years later, though, this thing turned up, and I didn't even buy this one in particular. This came with a lot of some other equipment that I wanted, and it's another vector scope. But I wasn't particularly excited about this one because it's newer than the other one. And the inputs, it still has the channel inputs, but they're marked serial input because they are what are called SDI, which is digital video feed from professional equipment. So it's not like I could just connect that to some analog video recorder and use it for aligning color systems. However, it would be useful to connect to some digital equipment and it could still be used if that digital equipment has then got analog inputs. So, you know, we could do something with this, couldn't we? So what uh, digital equipment do I have? Professional digital equipment with a SDI digital output that can feed this and analog inputs that I could then connect to other equipment. Um, just a tiny little video recorder will do that job. Well, we do have this little thing. Uh, DVW A500P. This is featured on my channel before when I did some minor repairs such as replacing the pinch roller. Uh, it's a fantastic digital beta cam machine. Uh, it has SDI out and it has analog inputs. So we could use this for uh, providing an analog source for our uh, vector scope. This is a minimum of what we require. When you switch this on you might remember when you saw me working on this machine, you only have to press a few buttons and it will output color, color bar patterns uh, to the outputs, including the SDI output. So I could feed that straight into here and we can have a look at what display we get. So let's hook all that up. Okay, what we have set up here then is a DigiBeta recorder set with no input signal at the moment. SDI out is connected to SDI in on here a composite out is connected to that monitor. So if we switch this on, there's a certain key sequence, I have to try to remember what it is, refer to my old video on when I restored this machine, um, on what sequence of buttons you press. I think you have to press a audio input channel to get sound, and not that we'll be using that for a minute, and a video input to get color bars. Uh, so we'll do that in a moment. Let's just switch this on. I think it's saying channel A has a valid signal, but it's just a dot in the middle because it's black. 
good. So let's put the audio on. Remember how to do that? Do you hold one of these on? Ah yes, that's audio on. And I think you do the same trick for video. Ah, look, that's working well. Uh, now that, the monitor has got the superimposed connection, whereas this is connected directly to STI out without superimposing. So hopefully that text won't be appearing on here. Okay, so we're aiming to land. What should happen, I think, is the colours should land in these little boxes. You can't quite see them. I'll turn the graphical lights up. Uh, they're not very bright. Perhaps I'll get you a closer to have a better look. Reflections are being a bit of a problem, but uh, even with a graphical illuminated, you can't quite see what we're aiming for here. Uh, let's reduce the light level in here. Slightly better, maybe. So we're aiming for these little squares here, but we're overshooting at the moment. And I think that means that we've got 100% saturation colour bars and those graphical illuminated, those marks are for 75% bars. I could change the uh, output of this, I think, to be 75. But I believe one of these buttons will do it for me. Is it that one? Ah, yeah, there we are. So it's now on 100%. So now we can see the colours from the colour bar pattern all landing into those uh, squares. That means, of course, that this is a very good calibrated um, color bar signal, and that's not surprising, given where it's coming from. What might be more interesting is what happens when we play some tapes or we feed this with an analog input. But first, let's also see what other um, displays we can get on this. So it's got input A and B, so if I go to B, we'll get nothing, so we'll leave it on. Oh, A, B, or both, right. View. Let's press the view button. Doesn't seem to do a lot. Nope, don't know what that one does. Reference. Ooh. External reference. Okay, well, it doesn't have an external reference, so switch that off. Channel. Not sure. Display waveform or vector scope, I think that means. So if we go to waveform. Okay, there are lines on the display showing where they should be. And they are lined up nicely. Yeah, the graticle has very faint markings for where these steps should be. And it can display both waveform and vector at the same time. So we'll go back to vector scope. Format, I don't think that's going to make any difference. No. Uh, you can save and, uh, yeah, you can save, store um, settings, I think, and also waveforms filter so low pass that be to filter out noise cow not sure I have to read the instructions I haven't found the instructions to this thing yet audio ah this can also display phase differences between the two channels on audio and that could be actually quite useful because one of the things I need to do uh, with one of these um, audio cassettes is look at the phase difference between channels uh, and that helps you to set up the azimuth that's this one but um, what's less than helpful since I still don't have the user guide for this thing is I don't know which uh, pins on the deconnector at the back are uh, the audio inputs so I can't use that just yet uh, magnifiers for the waveform I suspect Yes. It might actually be slightly easier to see these landing points with the graphical illuminator switched off. See those small squares there. Right, having set that up, let's now feed it with a analog input and uh, perhaps we can mess about with that a little bit. I've now connected up this um, time-based corrector which uh, can be set quite simply to do color bar outputs but it's feeding out composite video it's got S video as well but there's no S video input on this so it's connected to the composite input on here but the composite input on this machine is an optional extra and it may not be installed so let's see if I can select it 
it won't light. So there's no composite video input card on this, so I can't connect to that signal. Oh, that's a nuisance. Okay, let me show you the uh, somewhat tortuous uh, configuration I have at the moment. We have this DigiBeta recorder set to composite input, you can see there, because this has the optional uh, extra input. And the composite video input signal there is being fed by the output from this time base corrector. We can call up color bars on the time base corrector or on the DigiBeta or on what's feeding this. I have a composite video input connection from this. And this has been set to give us a color bar output too, as you can see there on that monitor. The idea being that the color bars that are being generated here can be fed into here and then we can play with the uh, settings on that and see the result on the vector scope as well as on the screen. Okay, let's do some experiments with this. So starting out with what we had configured initially upstairs in the workshop, we have the uh, digital beta cam producing a digital output, pure digital output to SDI and you can see the colors all landing in the squares. You can just about make out the small squares in the graphical. They really could have been made a little clearer. I've tried to set it up with a bit more shade now so we can see the graphical markers for red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow and of course black or white in the middle. So that's set up at the moment running on the color bars from the uh, digital beta cam. Let's go to the composite input connection on here. It won't look as good. Right, so bear in mind it's only composite video. I don't normally hook anything up with composite video uh, where it can be avoided. So I think that's why we're seeing these slight double splashes here. And the right that was set for 100 percent color bars we go to 75 percent color bars right so these are the 75 percent color bars from the uh hd cam machine and we're seeing this sort of double effect i think which is almost certainly due to the cabling but it's good enough for now if we use the internal uh color bar generator here uh, the, the colors look fine, but they're only they're not complete and that that might be that uh, this is not 75% It could be 60%. I'll look that up. This has some other color uh, tests Blue so again, it's a, a line purely out to blue, but not quite reaching it because the saturation is not sufficient and Red again not quite making it and we're seeing a little bit of that double pattern thing uh, and back to its, uh, oh that's uh, feeding directly from HD cam and that's its own color bars. So let's go back to the HD cam sourced signal. So we could do some experiments with this. For example, we could try uh, altering the saturation and I think we should see those all collapse towards the center. Perfect. So that's color bar, uh, that's now just uh, like a grayscale bars. What happens if we try too much saturation? Presumably, it will just sat it'll, it'll <laughs> saturate, so to speak. Uh, it will just uh, clip it. Yes, they start going all over the place as it starts clipping. We'll try the color balance. So this is um, it shifts between reddish tints and I don't know. We'll try it. So we move it that way. move it back so it certainly makes a complete mess and at that point we're seeing a saturation sort of issue. There's a, a special color balance built into this thing which allows us to go 3200k and it's useful for when people have shot material on an old camera that didn't have a white balance, uh, very clear white balance setting I and mean, you would uh, use the indoor setting for outdoors and everything would be very blue. You press this button and it goes a different sort of color uh, sort of what colour would you call that? 
pinky color. And look, even the uh, white has shifted. So if we take all the color out, there you go, it collapses to this point here. Okay, release that button, back to normal color. These machines have the ability to shift color relative to the luminance. Now I'm not sure that'll appear on a vector scope much, but uh, for example, typically on VHS or beta, it's not unknown for the color to be shifted a little bit. So if we swing it from one side to the other, you can see how the colors don't quite line up with the, uh, the black and white bars anymore. That could be useful for correcting defects. And these can also shift up and down, but I don't think we'll see anything there. No, we don't see it. But if we had any horizontal lines, you'd see the color going up because VHS and Beta both drop the chrominance uh, relative to the luminance by one line. We can also adjust the brightness. and contrast, which don't do an awful lot to the vector scope. You know, it's amazing how much difference that makes to the picture you're seeing there, but very little difference to the uh, vector scope, because that's really just looking at color. And we can take out individual colors. So if I take out red, we should see this line more or less collapse. Let's try that. Doesn't go all the way down, just reduces and wind it up. And you see it go over the top there. Similarly green, pulls away from the green, and blue. Some of the other graphical markings here, some are for the waveform display, so we can put that on. Uh, it's looking a bit grim, and I don't know if that's because of the composite video cables. There's actually a low-pass filter here. We can apply the low-pass filter. Uh, helps a little bit with some of the overshoot. And another graphical marker here is for phase, for that audio connection, which unfortunately we don't have the pinout for. I really would like to use that. So we could put left and right channels into the connector at the back and sit them on this line. Uh, when playing a tape and confirm that both channels are perfectly aligned and if they're not uh, and you're playing it on a cassette deck it means you've probably got an azimuth error uh, so you can adjust the head azimuth with the alignment tape uh, and get both channels perfectly in phase and that means then that the head block is uh, properly sent properly uh, vertically aligned if you want some experience with a vector scope they do turn up on eBay. Uh, you'd probably want an analog one if you're going to be using it with analog equipment. And let's hope you have better luck than I did with this one. You can get very sophisticated ones, cost thousands of pounds. They very often include a color display, which is obviously useful because you can actually display the image you're looking at there. Uh, but also there's an alternative. Uh, if you're using uh, high-end uh, video editing software and it seems that uh, uh, DaVinci Resolve is rapidly becoming the de facto standard for video editing software. Uh, that includes, as you can see here, um, a very good vector scope which looks quite similar uh, to the one I've been using and it gives you other functions as well. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed having a brief look at these vector scopes. Please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.